plan and the program you have for the church to rapture to take away the church before the great tribulation and thank you lord for the joy and the praise and the songs of triumph that you have given to your children we're asking oh lord that your grace that will make us endure to the very end and to the time of Christ's coming. Your grant to every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we pray that none of us will fade or fade or fall away before the end of our journey in Jesus' name. Amen. Speak to every heart this morning and prepare us that whenever you will come we will be ready to go with you in jesus name thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray god bless you you can sit down today we're coming to revelation chapter 14 and as we have learned during the period of searching the scriptures together you'll see what the lord was talking about we're going to go over that again revelation chapter 14. we're reading from verse 1 and i looked and lo a lamb stood on the mount zion and with him an hundred forty and four thousand having his father's name written in their forehead. And then in verse 2 we are told, And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their hearts. Verse 3, in verse 3, it says, and they sang, as it were a new song, before the throne and before the four beasts for living creatures, and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand, which were redeemed from the earth. In verse 4 it says, These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. In verse 5, it says, And in their mouth was found no girl, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Verse 6, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongues and people. In verse 7 it says, Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Let's go to verse 12. In verse 12, here is the patience of the saints. Here and are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Verse 13, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, says the Spirit, that they may rest 
from their labors and their works do follow them now verse 14 and i looked and behold a white cloud and upon the cloud one such like unto the son of man having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle as you look at those verses we have read together you will see that even though it's after the rapture during the great tribulation yet the love of god the mercy of god the grace of god still continues that there will be people even during that great tribulation when the wrath of god is poured upon the earth and when the wrath of the antichrist is very much also on the earth and when people will be suffering and there'll be a great tribulation a great trial a great trouble and a great torture and torment like nobody had ever seen on the face of the earth before yet there'll be those who call upon the lord there'll be those who seek the lord there'll be those who find the lord there'll be those who will stand in all the terrible situations at that time and they will stand for the lord you have the faith of the lord jesus christ operating in them and the power of the holy ghost also operating in their lives at that time and then it tells us eventually the people of God, those who are redeemed and those who are ransomed and those who are taken away from all the defilement of the world and they are redeemed and they are cleansed and they are poured and they are purified. They be recognized by the Lord, they will be rewarded by the Lord. As we look at those tribulation saints and we look at the present day saints, we find a lot of similarities among them which we are going to discover as we continue. Today, we are talking about God's recognition and rewards for Christ's true followers. The true followers today and the true followers at that time, the redeemed of the Lord today and the redeemed of the Lord at that time, the undefiled today and the undefiled at that time, the people who are following after the Lord today and those who are following after the Lord at that time, there will be the recognition of God concerning them. Among the Jews in Israel, 144,000 among the Gentiles, multitudes uncounted and innumerable. The Lord will recognize them and then they will reward them because they are true followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, there are people that will take everything they read in Revelation. After Revelation chapter 4, they take that they say that does not concern them because they feel they know they understand is the tribulation time and so anything they read there they say that's not mine that's like an ignorant believer looking at the old testament and he says whatever i read in genesis that's for abraham isaac and jacob whatever i read in exodus that's for moses and joshua and caleb whatever i read in the kings that's for david and solomon whatever i read in the prophets that's only for isaiah and jeremiah we don't do that we take every part of the word of god all scripture including revelation has been given by the spirit of god and they're good and profitable for doctrine for righteousness and they're good for instruction that the man of god the child of god shall be perfect perfected and poured and purified so that every part of the word of god will profit everyone that's why we're looking at this chapter 14 of revelation and i pray the word of god will be of benefit to your life in jesus name a good good church amen. amen god's recognition and rewards for christ's true followers we're looking at three points number one 
the purity and faithfulness of his bride, the bride of Christ. Those who love the Lord, those who know the Lord, and those who are totally given and surrendered unto the Lord. The Lord recognizes them, they are purged, they are purified by the blood of the Lamb, and they are faithful unto the Lord as a bride to the bridegroom, as the wife to the husband, the church, the bride is faithful to him, and they are purified. Point number two, the perdition and the fall of Babylon. The perdition and the fall of Babylon. There was a Babylon in the Old Testament that Babylon has fallen, and that Babylon has been wiped out. There is a Babylon after the rapture, and that's what we are talking about. They go into perdition and they fall. It says Babylon is falling, is falling. And then it tells us why Babylon will fall. That is the system of the world. That is all the people that the God of this world is uh, ruling over now. Babylon will fall and Babylon will go into perdition. I pray you'll not be part of Babylon. I will not be part of Babylon. Because when Babylon falls, everyone that is identified with Babylon, influenced by Babylon, sucked in by Babylon, will fall and go to perdition forever and ever with Babylon. The perdition and the fall of Babylon. Point number three is the perfection of fellowship with the bridegroom. When he comes and he is coming, coming suddenly and coming very soon and coming surely when he comes the church the bride will go with the bridegroom will go with Christ and then there will be the perfection of fellowship will receive a rewards his name will be on our forehead there will be no crying anymore no sorrow anymore no sickness anymore and there will be no night and the, sun, the light of the moon will not be our light will get into the paradise of God into the paradise of rest and forever and ever the bride will be with the bridegroom the church will be with the redeemer the saints of God God will be with Christ forever and ever the perfection of fellowship with the bridegroom let's come back to number one number one is the purity of uh, the purity and the faithfulness of his bride the purity and the faithfulness of his bride look at revelation chapter 14 verse 3 and he sung a song i as it were a new song before the throne and before the before the uh, four bees and the elders and no man uh, could learn that song but the hundred and the forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth redeemed from the earth and then he tells us in verse 4 it says in verse 4 these are they which were not defiled with women for they are virgins these are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth these i were redeemed from among men being the first fruits unto god and first fruits unto the lamb in those verses I read to you, under the under the title, the purity and faithfulness of his bride, there are three things we're looking at there. Number one, the cleansed and saved followers of the Lamb. Those who are followers of the Lamb, they have been washed, they have been cleansed, and they are saved and they are followers of the Lamb. Number two, the consecrated, sanctified first fruits unto the Lord. They are consecrated to the Lord. They are sanctified by the Lord. They are purged and purified by the Lord. They are made holy by the Lord. And they are the first fruits to the Lord. And then number three, are consistent and steadfast faithfulness with lowliness. 
our steadfastness with consistency of faithfulness and lowliness. Let's come to number one. In number one, and it does the cleanse and save followers of the Lamb. Look at verse 4 there. In verse 4, it says these are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. He's talking about the children of God. Understand whether we are in the Old Testament or when the New Covenant or we or the people that will be after the rapture. There is one thing that identifies the followers of Christ, the followers of the Lamb. And it's the same thing because Jesus Christ, the very Lamb of God, is the same yesterday and today and forever. Is the same in the Old Testament. The rock that followed them, that rock was Christ. Is the same today in this generation and age, and is the same even after the rapture. And so the followers of Christ will have this characteristic. It says, These are they which were not defiled. The people who follow the Lord are the people that have prayed, they have confessed their sins, they have turned away from their sins, and because of that, they are cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. In Psalm, in Psalm 51, reading from verse 2, Psalm 51, we're looking at verse 2. It tells us about the prayer of David and the prayer of everyone in the Old Testament that was cleansed, that was forgiven, whose sins were taken away. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. That was their prayer. And that was the prayer. That's the prayer of everyone that wants to follow the Lamb. All have seen and come short of the glory of God. And then if we're going to follow the Lamb, we cannot come with our sins and continue in our sins. Shall we continue in sin that the grace of God may abound, abide? No, God forbid. We must be cleansed and we must pray that we are cleansed from our sins and we are saved children of God in the prayer they be continued and everyone has to pray this prayer if you have not prayed the prayer before in verse 6 in verse 6 it says behold thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom look at verse 7 in verse 7 purge me with isom and I shall be clean that's the prayer of a person that actually wants to be a true follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to be saved? You want to be converted? You want to be a follower of Jesus Christ? You want to get to heaven at last? Here is the prayer. Purge me and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Actually, here is the prayer for salvation. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, it tells us, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. This is Christ's own salvation. God's own salvation. There are many kinds of salvation. There are some people that have a salvation that does not cleanse them from sin. There are some people that have a kind of salvation that still continue in their vomit. There are some people that say they are saved and they still continue in their defilement. The salvation of God takes us out of defilement. The salvation of God purges our lives, cleanses our lives, and things are no more the same. I want to ask you a question. Do you have his salvation are you cleansed from sin are you converted are you a new creature in christ or do you say i'm saved i'm saved and you still continue in your defilement of the past 
when you are truly saved, when anyone is truly saved, there is cleansing, there is purging, there is a new life, and you have the joy of salvation. You know, when somebody is saved, it's not like a person going back to the altar every time. Oh Lord, I've sinned again. Oh Lord, I've gone into that defilement again. When you are saved, there is the joy, there is the victory of salvation. And you are able to say, praise the Lord, I am saved. If that has not happened, get on your knees and pray and then you'll have the joy of salvation the victory of salvation the triumph of salvation the grace that comes with salvation uphold me with thy free spirit actually that's the promise of the lord ezekiel chapter 36 and we're reading from verse 25 ezekiel chapter 36 we're reading from verse 25 then will I clean, clean, will I sprinkle clean water upon you? That's the promise of the Lord. The Lord said, I will do it myself. I'll not leave Ezekiel the prophet to do it for me. I'll not leave Isaiah or Jeremiah to do it for me. And it is not the pastor of the church that will sprinkle that clean water upon you. This one is not water baptism. This is the cleansing that we have. If we're going to become new creatures in Christ, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Will I cleanse you? I pray it will happen in every life in Jesus' name. Number two here is the consecrated and sanctified first fruits unto the Lord. In the Revelation passage we have read, you will see that he said they are virgins and they are totally committed to the Lord. They are pure, as pure as virgins. They are holy, as holy as virgins. They are sanctified, as sanctified as virgins. And their first fruits unto the Lord. It tells us in James chapter 1 verse 18. James chapter 1 verse 18. Of his own will begat ye us. That word begat, beget, begotten. That means saved, born again. Of his own will begat ye us. Of his own will are we born again. With the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You understand the use of the first fruits there? And he's talking about the people in the church age before the rapture. The one we read in Revelation chapter 14 is after the rapture. But even before the rapture, you have the first fruits unto the Lord. And those first fruits, like you and I, if you are born again, they are the born again people. They are the begotten people. They are the people that have experienced a new birth. I told you that whether it is Old Testament, or it is the generation we are living today, or it is after the rapture, all those who follow the Lord, first fruits unto the Lord, they're the same. I've read to you now James chapter 1 verse 18. That's the age and the period of the church. Let's go to the Old Testament in Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 3. Israel was holiness unto the Lord. Look at this and the first fruits of his increase. The same condition. God says, I am God, I change not. And those who follow the Lord, who are first fruits unto the Lord in the old and the present and the future, all those who are first fruits unto the Lord, they'll have the same characteristic. And if you are born again today in this church age, you have this characteristic of holiness unto the Lord. Israel was holiness unto the Lord, 
the first fruits of his increase. All that devour him shall obtain. Evil shall come upon them, says the Lord. When you come to the Lord, nothing will devour you anymore. Nothing will destroy you anymore. And anyone that touches you, touches the apple of his eye. All right, anyone that touches me, anyone that touches me, touches the apple of his eye. No evil hand will touch you. No evil eye will see you. You are cleansed, you are consecrated, you are devoted, you are sanctified unto the Lord. Because of that, you are God's eye and you are, you are precious before the Lord as first fruits unto the Lord. Let's come to Romans chapter 11. We're reading from verse 16. Romans chapter 11. We're reading from verse 16. For if the first fruits be holy, you understand what he expects of the first fruits in the church age or any time is that that first fruit must be holy. The law is also holy, and if the root be holy, so are the branches. I pray that the grace of God that purifies, that sanctifies, and makes us holy, and presents us as first fruits unto the Lord, that grace will be abundant in your heart, in your life, in Jesus' name. Let's look at number three here. We're looking at a consistent steadfast faithfulness with lowliness we're consistent and we keep on following the lord until the lord will come actually the time in which we're living now is the time of real deception and the time of real trial and the time of persecution even before the rapture but the Lord has said, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, but the people, the believers, the children of God, the followers, the first fruits that continue unto the end, they will be saved. I will continue. We will continue in the grace of God in Jesus' name. And look at uh, First Corinthians chapter 15, uh, verse 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He'll give you the victory. Every temptation, you'll overcome. Every trial, you'll overcome. Every difficulty, every challenge, you'll overcome. Every opposition that will try to drive you away from the narrow path that leads to heaven, you will overcome in Jesus' name. And then you'll be praying every time, and you'll be praising God every time. There are some people that limit prayer to the time they are in their church, in their local church. That's the only time they pray. There are people that limit prayer to the time they get into trouble. There are people that uh, limit prayer to the time, special, special time. But you know, we have to pray without ceasing. We have to pray every time. When you are happy, you pray. When you are not happy, you pray. When you are healthy, you pray. When you are not healthy, you pray. When everything is going fine, you pray. When it appears things are upside down and you are praying and you are giving thanks to the Lord every time and you are able to say, <clears throat> thanks be to God which giveth us giveth us every day giveth us every time you will have the victory you retain the victory in your life in jesus name when satan comes with temptation when satan comes with discouragement you will be floating above his troubled sea in jesus name and you will praise god and you will thank god and you pray without ceasing. You'll be a favorite child of God in Jesus' name. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory 
through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 58, it says, As you are praising the Lord, beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, nothing will shake you. Nothing will stop you. Nothing will make you stop your journey halfway in Jesus' name. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding, always abounding. I will abound and I will stay and abide in the work of the Lord every day and you will abide in Jesus' name. Always, always, always. You know, there are people, they are in and out. They are up and down. They are the light, they are darkness. They are strong, they are weak. They are tired and they are revived. They are up and down. But you know, if we're expecting the coming of the Lord, that word always, whatever you believe, the doctrines of the word of God and the life you ought to live, whatever may be happening, whether you're in the house, you're in the church, you're in the office, you're in the market, every time this characteristic of the child of God will always be in your life in Jesus' name. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, your labor will not be in vain. Your service will not be in vain. Your service will be rewardable and you'll be rewarded on the final day in Jesus' name. Let's look at 2 Peter chapter 3. We're looking at verse 17. 2 Peter chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 17 it says ye therefore beloved brethren that as ye know these things beware lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked and fall from your own steadfastness the Lord has called us and we're following after the Lord and he wants us to be steadfast every time and he says beware and watch out and be very careful and take heed that you don't allow any temptation, any trial, any criticism, any, op any, any opposition, any oppression, any discouragement to make you fall away from your own steadfastness. You'll keep on standing and you'll stand until he comes in Jesus' name. If that is going to be so, it says, Therefore, brethren, therefore, beloved, therefore, children of God, seeing that she know these things before, that we know the great tribulation will come, we know a great trial will come upon the people of this world. It says, because we know that, and because we know those who are saved, and those who are cleansed, and those who are consecrated, and those who are, those who are sanctified, and those who are consistent, and those who are steadfast, and those who are faithful, are the only people that will go with the Lord on that final day. It says, because of that, you know that beware, lest ye also lest ye also other people are going to fall but you will not fall other people may be tired but you will not be tired other people may be derailed but you will not be derailed in jesus name and he says so that you will not be led away with the error of the wicked and you will not fall from your own steadfastness you will not fall in jesus name in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 42. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, we're looking at verse 42. It says, and they continue steadfastly. That is the characteristic of those who are going to get ready for the rapture, those who are going to get ready when the Lord will come. And it says, they continue steadfastly in the Apostles' doctrine. 
they don't go to the apostates doctrine they go they don't go to abominable doctrines they don't get into anything that will get them back into defilement again into a defiled and uh, corrupted life again but they abide in the apostles doctrine what's the apostles doctrine that when you are saved the lord makes you a new creature what's the apostles doctrine the apostles doctrine is that after you are saved you come to the lord again with sent for a sanctification for more grace in your life and you continue steadfastly in that apostles doctrine what's the apostles doctrine that after you are saved after you are sanctified you come and receive the power of the holy ghost and you're filled and you're saturated and you are immersed in the holy ghost and the power of the holy ghost will be operating in your life what's the doctrine of the apostles the doctrine of christ that says go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and everything christ has emphasized everything christ has preached you want to continue in them that steadfastness you are not dropping some of the doctrines and you're not saying i cannot abide by that anymore i cannot go by that anymore you abide in all the teaching of the word of god and they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers the lord will keep every one of us steadfast unto the very end in jesus name let's come to point number two now point number two is the perdition and the fall of babylon we're coming to revelation chapter 14 and we're reading from verse 8 the perdition and the fall of babylon it tells us look at verse 8 revelation chapter 14 verse 8 and there followed another angel saying babylon is falling is falling that great city because she made all nations to drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication it says babylon is falling is falling why is the repetition is falling and then is falling whenever there's any repetition like that like the dream given to pharaoh whenever they send repetition like that like the dream given to um, Nebuchadnezzar whenever there's any repetition like God has said something now and he says it again he talks of the certainty he talks of the assurance we have that this will happen that this must happen and when we talk about the fall and the perdition of Babylon, it is something so certain. It is something so sure that if anyone is still with Babylon in the Babylonian thought and Babylonian life and Babylonian comportment and Babylonian dress and anything belonging to Babylon, this is the time to come out as quickly as possible because babylon is falling is falling that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and when babylon falls what will happen to the people that remain in the world and they go on and at that time the antichrist will represent and, and they also symbolize the power and the force of Babylon and all those who receive the mark of that Antichrist and the mark of the beast being part of Babylon look at the perdition that will come to them in verse 9 in verse 9 Revelation chapter 14 verse 9 and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark and on his forehead or in his hand 
verse 10 it says in verse 10 talking about the people that will be in the system at that time and the people at the time of that great tribulation and they are part of that babylon and they receive the mark and they have the characteristic of the god of this world that he is of satan and of the antichrist the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of god which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be uh, he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb then in verse 11 it tells us it says the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receives the mark of his name you will not be part of the babylonian system in jesus name you know even at the time we're living now before the time of the rapture it says the mystery of iniquity does already work that is the spirit of babylon the influence of babylon we say it in a normal language the influence of the world coming into the lives of many people who call themselves christians and those who fall where babylon will be forgotten forever and ever in the lake of fire you will not be there i will not be there three things we're looking at number one damnable filthiness and fall of transgressing babylon babylon has transgressed that's why because of their filthiness they're going to have the fall number two divine fury and fierceness against treacherous babylon unfaithful babylon defiled babylon divine fury and and fierceness against treacherous babylon number three determined fleeing that is not so determined that they will not perish with babylon and they flee from babylon determined fleeing and faith of true believers let's look at number one in number one we're looking at damnable filthiness and and fall of transgressing babylon We've read it already in Revelation chapter 14, verse 8. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 17, and we're reading from verse 4. Revelation chapter 17, reading from verse 4. And a woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious tools and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of the abominations and filthiness of her fornication. It's talking about Babylon, and yet it's talking about Babylon as a woman, a defiling woman, an abominable woman that has is dressed very well appealing to the people of the world and then having in a hand for a cup that is full of abomination and filthiness of her fornication look at the real thing in verse 5 and upon her upon her forehead was a name reaching mystery babylon mystery babylon the great mother of harlots and abominations of the earth of the earth that is this babylon we're talking about is a system and this system is pictured as a woman and this pictured woman has abomination has filthiness as the mystery of iniquity and through that influences the rest of the world i pray that influence will not be upon your life in jesus name babylon transgresses 
and Babylon influences many other people to transgress. If you find anyone who is a transgressor, if you find anyone practicing abomination, if you find anyone who is filthy, if you find anyone who has defilement, and at the same time, he is not willing to remain all alone by himself, she is not willing to remain all alone by herself to be filthy, to be abominable, to be defiled, to be transgressing. He wants to influence other people in the same way. He wants to make a man fall. He wants to make a woman fall. He wants to make people who are saved. He wants them to forget about holiness and to become defiled and backsliding such people are part of Babylon. They are messengers of Babylon. They are agents of Babylon and they are the servants of Babylon. And when Babylon falls, they will fall with Babylon. You will not fall with Babylon. Let's look at number two there. Number two there is the divine fury and fierceness against treacherous Babylon. We're coming to Revelation chapter 16, reading from verse 19. Revelation chapter 16, reading from verse 19. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in, in remembrance before God. Have you noticed that? It says, and the cities of the nations fell. So it's not just one city that is called Babylon. It's all the cities of the world, all the cities of nations that have been influenced by Babylon. And when we talk about city, we're talking about the people there. All the people in all the cities of the nations of the world, whether Africa or America or Asia or Europe, everywhere, all the people that have been influenced by the defilement of Babylon, it says they also will suffer because there will be the fury of God and the fierceness of God. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. To give unto her of the cup of the fierceness of the wrath of God. Revelation chapter 18, we're reading from verse 10. Revelation chapter 18, reading from verse 10, it says, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour, in a moment, thy judgment is come. You see, there are people that are great, like Babylon. That great city, Babylon, great and evil, great and abominable, great and sinful, great and defiled. There are some people that they always yield to great men and great women. And because they say, since he is great, since she is great, everything she says, everything he does, I have to bow. They don't understand. It's not all great people that are saved and sanctified. They don't understand. It's not all great cities that are protected and purged. It is not all great nations that are saved and secured in the sight of God. There are people, whatever comes from that great nation, and they take that as number one nation in the whole world, whatever comes from that great nation, and then they take a particular city, whatever comes from that great city, they just, they just fall in line. But you understand? great city Babylon will fall and I pray you'll not fall with great cities and great nations in Jesus name it says that mighty city for in one hour 
is thy judgment come. Isaiah chapter 21, we're reading from verse 9. Isaiah chapter 21, reading from verse 9. And behold, there cometh a chariot of men, and with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is falling, is falling. I'm sure you cannot miss the point, Old Testament prophet Isaiah, the same prophet that prophesied about the coming of Emmanuel. The same prophet that prophesied about a child is born and a son is given. The same prophet that said, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. The same prophet that said, surely is meeting by the Lord, and he has borne our grief, and the chastisement of our peace is upon him. The same prophet that says, Christ is coming, and Christ came. That same prophet is now telling us, Babylon is falling, is falling and all the graven images of our gods he has broken onto the ground babylon will fall look at chapter 13 of isaiah isaiah chapter 13 we're reading from verse 13 isaiah chapter 13 verse 13 therefore will i shake the heavens and the earth understand that it is not just one local city it is not just one isolated city but all the cities of the earth all the nations of the earth influenced by the corruption of babylon and influenced by the abomination of babylon and all the people all the individuals that are influenced by the abomination of Babylon and you understand now the great influence that comes upon people they can see it after they have read the Bible after they have listened to the Word of God they are they are pulled and they are sought into the tube and then they see this and see that and they take their pattern of life and they take their character and they take their behavior and they take their action from what they see on the tube coming to them the influence of babylon is everywhere and therefore god says i will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger look at uh, verse uh, verse 19 there in verse 19 and babylon you see that as he's talking about the earth as he's talking about the nations of the world as he's talking about the people who are influenced by the by the uh, abomination of the world he reminds us again this is the handiwork of babylon this is the result and the consequence of the corruption of babylon coming upon the whole earth and it says and babylon the glory of kingdoms not only one kingdom the glory of kingdoms that is all the kingdoms of the world they're looking up to babylon and they're saying what a glory and what wealth and what wisdom and what research and what things and what invention coming out of that great babylon the glory of kingdoms the beauty of the chaldeans excellency shall be as when god overthrew sodom and gomorrah and all the glory will vanish because they'll go into perdition and they'll fall into the fury and the fierceness of the almighty god look at the first line of verse 20 the first line of verse 20 it shall never be inhabited neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation while we will continue forever and ever in the presence of God, those who are saved, those who are converted, those who are redeemed, those who are sanctified, 
those who are made holy, those who are children of God, while we continue forever and ever in the fellowship of God, in the fellowship of the Lamb, all Babylon and all the people that are influenced by Babylon, they'll be forgotten by God because they'll be abandoned in hell and they can never come out of that place. You will not fall with Babylon. I will not fall with Babylon. Let's come to number three now. Number three, the determined fleeing and faith of true believers. Those who are going to escape the fall of Babylon and those who are going to escape the fury and the fierceness that will come on Babylon. Look at Revelation chapter 18, reading from verse 2. Revelation chapter 18 reading from verse 2 it says and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying babylon the great is falling is falling babylon the great is falling is falling and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Look at verse 4 and look at what the Lord is calling you and I to. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people. You want to escape the fury, the fierceness, the wrath, the judgment, the eternal perdition coming upon Babylon and all those who are influenced by Babylon come out of her, my people. You want to be separated and you want to be secured under the protection of the blood of the Lamb. Come out of her, my people. You don't want the same judgment coming upon Babylon to come upon you. You don't want the Lord to see any influence and any instruction and any principle, any practice of Babylon in your life come out of her my people that she be not partakers of her sins and that he receive not of her place all who are partakers of the sins of the abomination of the filthiness of the defilement of babylon will be partakers of the plagues of the perdition of the punishment coming upon babylon but it says come out you will not remain in the babylonian system in jesus name did I have a good church? Amen. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 6. In Jeremiah chapter 51, we're reading from verse 6. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. Don't say, I'm still picking up this. I'm waiting for something. Babylon promised me this. I'm going to get that promise before I come out. And then I've worked with them. I've served them. I'm still expecting this and that. I want to get the benefit of all the greatness of Babylon before I come out. It says, be in a hurry and do it right now because you don't have any time to wait flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul and deliver every man his soul if you remain in the influence if you remain under the practice and the principles of Babylon your soul will be in jeopardy and your soul will be in danger but it says come out and flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul and be not caught up in her iniquity but this is the time of the Lord's vengeance he will render unto her a recompense I pray every one of us will be out of that Babylon in Jesus name Zechariah chapter 2 verse 7 in Zechariah chapter 2, reading here from verse 7, Deliver thyself, deliver thyself. Christ has died for you. He has paid the price. And the Lord Jesus Christ is not willing that you shall perish. And God is not willing that you shall perish. 
but if you remain in the Babylonian system, if you remain under the influence of Babylonian power, you will perish with Babylon. That's why it says, This is the time, deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. Babylon. I pray none of us will perish with Babylon in Jesus' name. We'll come to point number three now. Point number three is the perfection of fellowship with the bridegroom. The Lord is coming and thank God you'll be with the Lord. Thank God you will not fail and you will not miss the rapture in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 14, we're reading from verse 12. Revelation chapter 14, we're reading from verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Anytime you see that word patience, uh, sometimes it means the perseverance of the saints, the endurance of the saints. Here is the patience, here is the perseverance, here is the... Uh,